Hello. In this video, I'm going to provide an overview of aromatic compounds. And then uh, this video marks the first video in a series about uh, the structure of aromatic compounds in particular, leading up to being able to recognize uh, if a given compound contains an aromatic ring. Uh, throughout this video, I'm going to talk a lot about benzene there in the upper right. Uh, benzene is the simp one of the simplest aromatic compounds and is actually the parent compound for the whole uh, class of compounds. And that benzene ring structure is found in a lot of compounds, uh, including uh, some very common and well-known uh, drug-like compounds. So here's the structure of diphenhydramine uh, and then a histamine that's marketed under a trade name Benadryl. This is ibuprofen, uh, an analgesic painkiller marketed under the trade names Motrin and Advil. Here's uh, procaine marketed, marketed under the brand name Novocaine. This is a local anesthetic. And then benzene is also present uh, in uh, really complicated structures like aclitaxel, uh, a chemotherapeutic agent for the, the uh, treatment of cancer. <laughs> because the, this aromatic ring functional group is so common, it's worth spending a little bit of time talking about what makes it unique. Um, and I like to start with a little bit of the history of benzene. Uh, it was first isolated by the decomposition of benzoic acids, so actually, Benzoic acid came first. Benzoic acid was isolated from a, a plant resin called gum benzoin. Uh, and so some of these other compounds that you encounter that have that B-E-N-Z benz or benzo uh, root name in them are actually older or, and have been known longer than benzene. And benzene is not the origin of the name. It's actually benzoin from the plant. Uh, then benzoic acid uh, isolated from that decomposition and then uh, decomposing benzoic acid further to form benzene. And benzene has unusual reactivity, which implied uh, symmetry, that when brominated, it reacts with bromine to produce one C6H5Br isomer. But when that isomer reacts again, three different isomers are formed. Uh, all of this was a mystery that led to, in the, the late, 1800s, uh, something of a competition to try to determine the correct structure of benzene, which was finally confirmed using x-ray crystallography in 1929. Uh, so here are some early proposed structures. Um, as early as August Kekulé's structure, which is actually over there on the far right for a reason, uh, through some things that came along later, um, we have this, these weird looking structures from Klaus, Dürer, Leidenberg, Armstrong, Thio, Thio, and Kekulé, but it's that Kekulé structure on the far right that has survived into the modern world as the structure of benzene, although the Thio structure is also used uh, because benzene has resonance as depicted on the bottom. A lot of people will use the Thio structure uh, as an attempt to represent the resonance hybrid. It's worth noting that the Dewar structure and the Leidenberg structure uh, represent real structures that can be isolated, uh, and derivatives of them have been synthesized over the years. It's said that uh, there's, a, there's a sort of apocryphal anecdote uh, that Kekulé liked to share when he was talking about discovering the structure of benzene, uh, and that was that he was inspired by a, a dream of the Ouroboros, which I've got there on the upper right, which is the alchemical symbol of a snake biting its tail, representing a non-ending sort of infinite cycle. Uh, the reactivity of benzene is significantly different from other alkenes. So, for example, cyclohexene reacts with bromine at room temperature very quickly. Um, <clears throat> and this, this can be observed pretty readily by dropping bromine, which is an orange liquid, into cyclohexene and watching the color disappear rapidly. However, at room temperature, bromine does not react with benzene. And even though I mentioned the reaction of benzene with bromine before, this reaction needs a catalyst to activate uh, the, get the reaction going. And so in the presence of iron tribromide, benzene does react with bromine, but not to give an addition product. Benzene reacts with bromine to give a substitution product. Here's another uh, case. For example, uh, cyclohexene 
undergoes catalytic hydrogenation at room temperature and one atmosphere hydrogen pressure using platinum. And platinum being at the bottom of that group is actually the least reactive of the, that group towards catalytic hydrogenation. Benzene requires nickel at the top of the group, the most active, most reactive element in that group and an elevated temperature and much higher pressures to achieve conversion. And actually, we're going to talk about this reaction to sort of set up the understanding of the resonance stability of benzene. You want to, you want to compare similar reactions so you can, your comparisons are valid. So here I have a graph uh, showing the uh, enthalpy of hydrogenation of cyclohexene, cyclohexadiene, and benzene in the blue bars. The dot or the dashed lines represent sort of predicted values ignoring resonance stabilization. And you can see that cyclohexadiene, which is conjugated, comes in a little bit under its predicted value. And if you've uh, been studying the, the, the behavior of conjugated compounds, it shouldn't surprise you that cyclohexadiene comes in a little bit under its, its expected value. Benzene comes way under, 152 kilojoules per mole. Uh, to get an idea of that magnitude, that is the uh, bond association energy of an iodine molecule. So the resonance stabilization in benzene is of a similar magnitude to some covalent chemical bonds. And so there is, you know, so benzene is 152 kilojoules per mole more stable than would otherwise be expected. And this is what leads to its unusual reactivity, which will be the subject of another uh, video series later. One last thing to talk about in the structure of benzene is its molecular orbital diagram. Uh, if you've seen molecular orbital diagrams for pi molecular orbitals for, for linear conjugated hydrocarbons, you'll, you will have seen that those molecular orbitals are all stacked vertically. Well, in benzene, the benzene molecular orbitals are sort of actually more uh, shaped in a hexagon, and that's not actually coincidental. Um, but what there are is a pair, is one lowest lying pi molecular orbital, and then the next two pi molecular orbitals are degenerate. They have the same energy, the same number of nodes, same symmetry, etc. And then there's a degenerate pair of antibonding molecular orbitals, and then one more antibonding orbital all the way at the top. And all of the bonding orbitals are filled. None of the antibonding orbitals have electrons in them, um, but it's the fact that there's this degenerate pair of bonding orbitals that are filled that contributes to the benzene stability. Uh, and then I'm going to conclude just with this picture of what those molecular orbitals look like. And so those orbitals at the bottom of the screen are the bonding molecular orbitals. Uh, starting with one, there's a continuous pi bond overlap across all six atoms. And then the two degenerate pairs, each with a node that splits down through the middle of the ring. And then the degenerate pairs of uh, anti-bonding -mole anti molecular orbitals with two nodes. And then finally, uh, the anti-bonding orbital at the top of the screen uh, really honestly just looks like 6p kind of orbitals uh, hanging around there, not really doing anything together. So that concludes my video on introducing aromatic compounds in the structure of benzene. In the next video, I'll talk a little bit about nomenclature of benzene derivatives, and then we will start a sequence of videos on identifying other aromatic compounds besides benzene. Thank you for watching.